Next, we'll talk about estimating. Sometimes you don't need exact numbers. Sometimes you need to do some math. You need to add some numbers up. But an, but an estimate might be sufficient. Suppose, for example, you're going to try to count the, no, the number of people seated in a baseball stadium. And a baseball stadium is big and has a lot of people. And there, it's divided into sections. And you could add up all the people in each section. But it might take a long time. Let's take a look at these numbers. Suppose they're seated like this. You've got so many people in section A and so many people in section B, as you see here. Well, we could add these up. But adding them up would take a long time. It's kind of tedious to add all these numbers up. There'll be a lot of carrying, a lot of uh, little computations, a lot of opportunities to make a mistake. Even if we did it on, on a calculator, that's a good bit of typing. And it's surprisingly easy to make typographical errors just uh, hitting the wrong key on a calculator. But it might be uh, sufficient just to get a rough estimate of the number of people in the stadium. So what we can do in this case is round each of these numbers to the nearest 100. And then it will be a lot easier to add them up. So in section A, instead of saying 128 people, I'll call that 100. It's approximately 100. And in section B, instead of 188, well, that's approximately 200 people. And in each case, we round to the nearest 100. So section C, we think of that as 400 instead of 417. Section D would be 500. E gets rounded to 300. And F gets rounded to 700. So all those numbers are now rounded to the nearest 100. And then we can add them up. And this becomes really easy. You can do this in your head and watch how I do this. I see the 700 and the 300. And in my mind, I group those. It's easy to see that those add up to 1,000. And then I see this 500 and 400. Those together add up to a 900. And this 100 there gives me another 1,000. So that's 2,000. And then this 200 right here in addition to that. So it adds up to a total of 2,200, and that's my answer. That's not the exact answer, but that's pretty close. Should be close to, the, to around the nearest 100. If we actually add all the numbers, it comes out to 2,269. So we're not too far off here with 2,200. We're off by 69. Pretty small difference for a number that size. And in a case such as this, an estimate may be sufficient. Now, there's one thing to take note of, and, and consider this a warning here. This method of getting an estimate by rounding the numbers and then adding, that works reasonably well and gives pretty good results when some of the numbers get rounded up and some of them get rounded down, as we had happen here. You see the 128 got rounded down to 100, and the 188 got rounded up to 200. And in, in every case, the number either got rounded up or rounded down, and some were rounded up and some were rounded down. So the rounding introduces an inaccuracy in your answer. But if some of the numbers are rounded up and some of the numbers are rounded down, those inaccuracies tend to cancel each other out. Not necessarily exactly, but they tend to cancel each other out. And that's usually the case if you have a random sample of numbers and you're trying to round like we did in this case to the nearest 100, some of the numbers will probably be a little bit above 100 and some will be a little bit below. So some ended up being rounded up and some rounded down. It's possible, though, for most or all of the errors to be rounding in the same direction. So just by chance, most or all of the numbers could end up being rounded up or being rounded down, and the errors could accumulate to a large total. So this method is not foolproof. It's a reasonably good way to get an estimate, just round the numbers and get an estimate, but it's not perfect. And a, a look at the actual data that you're using might be able to tell you whether it's going to give you a good estimate or not.